Thank you for joining me for this first edition of the Audio Miser. Uh, what you're looking at now is the MBL 610D preamplifier. This is the original one. Uh, we're going to be talking about the clone um, because the difference in price is about, uh, well, $22,000 plus. Dollars. Um, the original one came out in something like possibly 20, 2003. So is it possible that maybe with uh, 15 years of uh, circuitry advance and other things and a, a Chinese willingness to copy other people's designs, is it possible that you're actually listening to a $23,000 preamp for less than $400? Well, it could be. But I'll let other people who maybe have a degree in electronics can answer that question. I'm just going to talk about how it sounded. Okay, so how did it sound? Well... Put it, the short answer is this. So one thing, the first thing that did concern me a little bit was the, uh, what I thought was a very high amount of gain. Um, the gain just seemed a little uh, bizarre based on what I was used to. Uh, didn't seem to be a discrete type of gain. Just seemed to just kind of really just turned it up really, not really loud. I don't want to give the impression of low fidelity or, uh, or distortion or anything. It just seem to be more gain than what I was used to with other preamps. Maybe that's what you find in a $23,000 preamp, so maybe that's why I was surprised. Anyway, but I just, just want to note that. And it did seem to mellow out considerably over after three days of burning, and the gain seemed a little bit more, a little bit more natural. Okay. Um, what can I say about the preamp? Okay, well, let me just say this. Um, it goes, it, you can go down the uh, audio file checklist with this preamp. You can go down, you can check off, uh, you know, bass, you can check off treble, you can check off holographic sound, you can check off weight, you can check off sound field, uh, staging, layering, all the things that you would want to have in a preamp. Now, is any portion of it the final word in any of those things? I don't know that I could say that it is, but I do know using my own system as a reference, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment, uh, I was very pleased. Because, see, everybody's system is different, and it's not really fair to try to, to say that something is too good or too bad when you're, you, you know, it's only going to be as good as your best equipment. So what is my equipment? Well, my amp is Chi Fi. It's from a co company called Audio GD. It's the discontinued um, SA300, um, and I've had it for about 10 years and don't see replacing it. Um, that's one of a few things. There's a couple of components in my system that I have not replaced in years. One is the amp, and two are my monitor audio um, R6. Uh, speakers had those now for 12 years don't see replace them in, unless they break or something okay other things have come in and out of the system um, the current CD players by the Emotiva um, ERC3 I think is the CD player uh, my DAC is a Chinese made Gustard which I'm going to be doing a review of the Gustard um, and that would be probably the next review that I do. Uh, that's just a recent addition. When I say recent, within the last two years, I'm not into upgrading as much anymore. I've tried to reach a, a level where I can say, okay, this is what I can afford, this is where I'm at, and this is the best value. Everything has to punch above its weight class. So whereas the Goose Dart was about an 800-some dollar deck, I really feel that I could have paid $2,000 for a DAC and wouldn't have gotten any better. And that's, what I, that's how I try to do everything. That I could pay twice as much and still not done any better. And that's how I value, uh, that's how I can tell the value of a, of a component. Okay. So the, this, this, this MBL clone uh, did everything that I wanted it to do. Um, I will give you a little tweak tipping uh, t uh, tip though. Take uh, when if you do buy it off of eBay, while you're there, 
um, look for uh, RCA um, plugs. I forget the name of it. Maybe I'll put a link to it down in there. But close off all of your uh, unused uh, inputs. It makes a big difference in sound. A big difference. It's like a really inexpensive tweak that's very audible right away. Um, you know, it's not something you have to strain your ears to hear or anything. So it's, it's a very good uh, thing to do. Um, by the way, I was also running balanced audio. So everything I'm saying is based on balanced audio, balanced amp, balanced preamp, um, the a, variety, a wide variety of music was used, but it was mostly jazz. Uh, did throw in Get Ready by Rare Earth and some Santana, but most of it was jazz. I used uh, recording various recording disciplines um, to kind of get a broad sense. Well, what I mean by that? Well, for example, I might have did some uh, Blue Note stuff. It was just basic two-track, uh, some three-track recordings that I've had a lot of good things with sonically uh, when some stuff was 32-bit remasters some were uh, the k2 remastering system all kinds of stuff to just deal with different um, playback and recording disciplines and mastering disciplines just to kind of see how this handles stuff and it handled everything very well I was very very pleased uh, at this price point I can't complain uh, is it in fact a twenty-three thousand um, dollar preamp? I can't say, um, but I can say that it sounded very good in the system. And if you're thinking about uh, a preamp and you, then you have something like three fifty, four hundred to spend, I don't think you can go wrong. Uh, I'm asking people to subscribe to this channel one because I'm a fledgling channel, but two, I need your help. Not so much so I can have a high subscriber count. What I'm looking for is other people to share their experiences with, um, you know, budget audio. That you can help other people too. Because with this hobby, it's not always easy to find reviews of inexpensive stuff. Uh, you can find reviews of expensive stuff in Stereophile magazine and, you know, $30,000 this, $5,000 that. And occasionally they'll do some budget stuff as well, but this is going to be a channel that's dedicated to budget uh, audio. And so if you feel that you want to subscribe and help out in that respect, please do so. It's appreciated. Uh, thank you. This is the Budget Audio File, a.k.a. the Audio Miser. Thank you for joining me. Peace.